today we have a situation from an ecological standpoint that promotes a totally different fire regime. One that used to be these low severity surface fires to a situation where you have dense forests that have really high number of trees per unit area. We've resulted in this buildup of not just dead fuel, but live fuel too. The leaves are overlapping and forming kind of a continuous canopy in the tops of these trees and that just promotes these large fires that have grown in orders of magnitude over the last couple of decades. Basically, we need to get rid of trees. There's some types of thinning that can actually create a worse fire threat than doing nothing alone. We need to have a balance between the two. We need to have forests that are productive, that are growing well, but at the same time have a structure the spacing of the trees, that clumping of groups with open areas in between, such that it promotes fire resistance and resilience. You have to look at it as a, as a holistic system. You have to also think of what, what are the implications of doing that thinning on biodiversity for resources like water, um, carbon storage, just to name a couple. What happens when you have one of these large fires is all of a sudden you lose not only carbon from combustion that goes straight to the atmosphere, but you also potentially lose the productivity or the growth of that forest for the next several decades. The climate's gonna be much warmer 50 years from now at a given location than it is right now. How do you manage for the future when the future is changing? We need to have a coordinated effort where we're all on the same page. We're all working together. You have to get people talking with each other and sharing a common vision for how they want the ecosystem to look like in the future. The basic tenet of, of ecological theory is that everything is connected at some level and there's always going to be a limit to everything.